zero out of ten would recommend and i feel really strongly about hi hey guys and welcome to today's video today's video is going to be the honest truth about guinea pig cages more specifically i'm going to be talking about diy guinea pig cages such as our wooden diy guinea pig cage so as you know if you watch my videos we went through a couple of diy cages So we built one, kind of figured out what we needed to change, kind of outgrew this cage and then built a new one. The main reason why we always built a new one was that we or rather the guinea pigs just really needed more space. So we always went for a bigger version of the cage. Still, we kind of, of course, adapted our cage throughout the years. Our cage changed very much from the very first cage we built as we just got more experienced in building these cages. And we just started to look out for things that weren't as practical. Having the guinea pigs in this cage and like being near this cage basically 24 seven and cleaning the cage and feeding the guinea pigs in this cage, we of course started to notice that some things with these cages work really well and there are some things when you build these cages that might look really nice, but you should really avoid. So this is what this video is going to be about. If you plan on ever building a DIY cage, watch this video to the end before making any of the mistakes that we've made. So first of all, let's start with reasons why you would even consider building your very own cage. Because of course, I'm not gonna lie, building your own cage is a ton of work. One of the main reasons in general not to get a pet store cage is that any type of cage that you kind of customize, so whether it's a CNC cage, whether it's a wooden cage, you are of course able to build a way bigger cage than what pet stores offer. Now a specific reason for getting a wooden DIY cage might be that first of all it's completely customizable, so if you have any nooks in your apartment or your house or if you really want to fit the cage in a specific corner it's very easy to build this cage in the way that it really fits into your living space so that is of course a big advantage of building the cage yourself it's very customizable and also since most of your furniture is probably going to be made out of wood the cage kind of integrates into your living space like a piece of furniture in a sense, still a cage at the end of the day. Also, of course, with the wooden DIY cage, you're able to use plexiglass or plastic windows, which doesn't give you the traditional bars look that most of the guinea pig cages have. That being said, as I've said before, we did go through a couple of cages. So let's look at some things that just really didn't work out at all. Okay, the first category that I want to talk about is cleaning. If you have guinea pigs, you'll just be cleaning a lot. So the cleanability of your cage is a very important aspect. One of my absolute favorite cages was our very first DIY cage, the L-shaped cage. There was just something about the design of this cage. Like the L-shape was really adorable. It really felt cozy. I just really like the design of it. It's probably one of my favorite designs. That being said, the L shape was a pain to clean. The little L note was particularly difficult. So I cleaned my cage with a dustpan and it was really hard getting into the L shape with the dustpan. You really had to tilt your wrist in an uncomfortable way and it was still very hard to reach everything. The problem was that the L shape was on the side where the level was and it was pretty much impossible for me to reach the corner that was directly opposite of the L shape. At the same time, the cage wasn't that big, so it wasn't really possible for me to go into the cage. So I was kind of stuck asking my husband to help me clean this cage. So the main takeaway from this is measure your arm's length and find out whether you can fully reach all of the spaces in your guinea pig cage. Some designs might look really, really nice, but if you can't properly clean your cage, it's going to be really annoying in the long run. This was a major fault with this cage and honestly, zero out of 10 would recommend. You're going to be angry every time you have to clean this cage. So my biggest advice would actually be to not only measure your arm's length, but to also make sure that you can actually step into the cage if it reaches a certain th size. It's just going to make everything so much easier. So the easiest way to achieve this is to put a lot of wood underneath your cage so that it can hold your weight. Okay, let's talk about the cage design. So one thing that lots of guinea pigs don't like is ramps. And also as guinea pigs get older, they very often like ramps less. 
Still, my experience is that lots of guinea pigs enjoy an upper level. This is one of the reasons why we actually built this mezzanine space in our current cage. This is the first time we've done that and it works out so well. We've so far had Heidi's that acted like a ramp or that were very ramp-like and only the young guinea pigs really use that. Um, we also had a built-in ramp at one point which we tried to design in a way that it was easy to clean underneath it but the guinea pigs still didn't really like it that much and to get most of your guinea pigs to be able to reach the level the easiest way is to just get a level that is for example the flat roof of a house or like the mezzanine that we built um, the mezzanine gets used a ton because sometimes an older guinea pig doesn't want to go up all the way but still wants to be a little bit higher up than the other guinea pigs and the mezzanine works really well for that. It's pretty much just a step for them. While the ramp did got used by some guinea pigs, I'd say the mezzanine so far was the best thing that we've ever tried. Okay, so the next one is a big one. <laughs> One I feel really strongly about. Okay, so with our first cage, we used U-profiles to keep the plastic glass in, in place. With our second cage, we ran into the problem that we couldn't buy U-profiles. They were just sold out everywhere. And so we kind of just figured, you know what, let's just glue in the plexiglass because it might give it a more clean look because you don't have the silver U-profile, but rather you just see the plexiglass and it just seamlessly fits in. That was our thought process behind that and <laughs> in no way did that work out. This was the most annoying thing we've ever did. So it only takes a little hit with the vacuum cleaner and the whole glass window just falls out. And it's so annoying to just keep gluing in these windows and we were just so frustrated at the end of it. And with building this cage, we were like, yeah, no questions asked, we're getting the u profiles again. Now, if you want to build a better cage than we did, the most elegant solution would be to kind of just use a saw to basically create a U-profile in the wooden beam and, and then be able to just slide the plexiglass into the wooden beam. That's probably the most elegant way and I think it works pretty seamlessly. I've seen it online before and it just looks really, really great. Probably more something that we would do if you have a garage where you're building your cage and you're not doing the whole thing in your living room, which also is something I would not recommend, building an entire guinea pig cage in your living room. But still, um, that would be the most elegant solution and that is something that I'm definitely keeping in mind for future cages. But don't be like us and just glue the plexiglass windows in. Also, the second thing that's really annoying if you glue these glasses in is you will never be able to properly clean them and all of the guinea pigs are going to lick the glass. <laughs> so it is going to get dirty pretty quickly. Some guinea pigs also like to throw their cucumber against it while they're holding it in their mouth. So you need to clean these glasses. You have to find a solution where you can take the glass out, clean it and then put it back in. One thing <laughs> that's really not that great about our current cage is when we were building this cage, we used wooden dowels in the front to attach the entire front face. So the wooden beams that are on the side and that are on the bottom. We thought this would be really great because you can just take everything out, which would be awesome if you were to move and need to take the cage apart. Also, if you want to change something about the cage, make it bigger, change something up, it's really easy to just take apart everything. Great in theory. The problem is it doesn't work when you use bedding. So wood just kind of moves away from the cage, which wouldn't really be a problem, like, like one hit against the wood and it's in place again. But the bedding slides into the space between the cage and the wooden beam where the wooden dowels are and you're just not able to attach them properly to the cage anymore. So you have to take it apart completely, clean everything and then reattach it which is a ton of work and next time I would honestly just use screws again. <laughs> Another thing that really pertains to the design of the cage is we also had a square cage at one point um, that was kind of our L cage. We just needed a little bit more space so we decided to get rid of the L and just make it square. However, once your cage exceeds a certain size, a square cage just looks massive. Once your cage exceeds probably the size limit of three or four guinea pigs. I would always go for a rectangular shape of a cage. 
unless of course you can fit it perfectly into a certain nook. Pond liner is the most amazing invention when it comes to wooden guinea pig cages. Pond liner is waterproof, doesn't let any water through and you basically put it on the bottom of the cage so that even if the bedding or the fleece liners don't really hold up, still none of the pee gets onto the wood. Also on the bottom floor, the guinea pigs are unable to chew it because it gets wrapped tightly around the baseboard and then all of the wood gets attached on the outside of it. So the guinea pigs don't really have a chance of reaching it with their teeth. However, that's one of the disadvantages of the mezzanine that we didn't see coming. Fitz is able to reach the pond liner if she's sitting on the mezzanine and is trying to chew on the upper level. So we'll probably have to get a wooden beam, a really, really small one to just put it there so that the guinea pigs can still utilize the space between the level and the mezzanine because they really like to go through there, but still need a little piece of wood so that Fitz isn't able to chew the pond liner. We didn't really think about this beforehand because it works out so well on the floor level. It doesn't really work out with all types of levels. Also, if you already have fleece liners or if you know which type of fleece liners you're going to use, it definitely makes sense when you're planning the cage to plan the cage size-wise according to your fleece liners so that they fit into the cage perfectly so that you don't have this much space that you need to buy a whole fleece liner for even though it would be able to cover a space this big. When it comes to level, really make them big. Big enough for at least two grown guinea pigs and big enough for one or two Heidi's to fit on there. That was one of our big mistakes with the first level that we built. We had really small guinea pigs during that time and thought this would be a sufficient upper level, but it turned out to be way too small for all of the guinea pigs. That These were a couple of mistakes that we encountered when we built our guinea pig cage. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time. Bye.